I think at some point, Colin and I will have a chat about, about readjusting to, um, to a different life. I like to transition from, from, from one job to another. I, don't... I think men can certainly you relate to what I'm about to say in that uh, if you walk into a room, if you walk into a, like a party setting, the conversation will be around what do you do for a living so that they can assess where you are within the hierarchy of that conversation. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do next? And who are you? Who, who are you? Yeah. Who, who's, who's Colin and who's Rob? Watch to the end to see our new addition to the family. But before any of that, roll intro. <laughs> Les poules, vous avez faim? D'accord. Good morning. From the department says that's your aunt, the northernmost tip, the southwest of France. I very nearly didn't make this video today, only because some woman on a roundabout yesterday in Conflon decided to take, to take me out. Not on a date, take, take me off my bike. <laughs> She ignored the fact that I was on the roundabout and just came hurtling in. Uh, it was only because I, I was watching her. But I managed to stop in time. Anyway, and before that, I got stopped by the police. We're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, not far from Colin's house. In Prince Concert Life. Make a description. Um, they just popped out of nowhere. Um, made me pull over and, uh, and asked for a sample of breath. Which I give them. And, uh, and it was negative. And uh, I was having a conversation with them. In French, actually. And uh, I asked them what, uh, because the the older gent had been in the uh, had been in the gendarmerie for five years, and the younger gent had only just joined. And I asked them what uh, they called uh, young officers within the gendarmerie, and he said, nah, nothing." I said, "In England, we call young officers sprogs." So that was it then. He started calling the young lad a sprog. It's good to impart knowledge, isn't it? Especially if it's, if it's insulting. Anyway. Yeah, thanks for all the comments yesterday about the about the video on Orador Seglin. I think it's pronounced. A, uh, it seems though, yeah, quite a lot of you have been there. But uh, yeah, it was quite a sombre visit um, there the other day. Sombre, it's uh, French for uh, for dark, and we use it as well for that. Um, but uh, back to normal in terms of normal chirpy. Happy me with decent music that I've never played before, whatever. Uh, but anyway, um, so I'll play a little clip of what went on yesterday. Well, basically, I was giving Colin a hand, basically when going to and from the tip the and going on. So I'll show you Today is pretty much the same. Uh, off uh, to Rosh Hashanah, where we're going back to the mill 
to keep on top of that and then we're going to be going to a house to uh to mow lawns and just generally tidy that up so uh let's go from here to here right so we're back at the mill gonna do some uh, trouble at mill trouble at mill <laughs> um sorry colin it, it's face detected me and it's not getting you right, so you're gonna need to get in come on that's it Aye. we're all friends here oh just now yeah so we've got a bit of uh got a bit of stuff to, to do here and then we've got to go a bit later on this afternoon we're doing some other work yeah and uh do you know what i think at some point colin and i will have a chat about about readjusting to um your, to a different life yeah definitely. we were talking about it yesterday weren't we were we? Yeah. about um yeah about becoming the new you, about retiring and losing that identity. Because I think it's important for, uh, for everyone just to uh, be able to recognise that, you know, you are not what your occupation was or is. And... Uh, yeah, and so what you're saying is, does your occupation define you as a person? Exactly, exactly. And I think that's what a lot of people struggle with when they enter retirement, whether it's early retirement like Colin and I, or whether everyone has to retire at a certain age anyway, everyone's going to go through that adjustment period. So we'll have a chat about that. Anyway, so let's get on with some, some stuff. Shining, some shines on the watches. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, I think before we talk about um, your readjustment into like a career change or a change in direction or going into retirement, semi-retirement, I think it'd be uh, important for people who are watching to know um, what you did before. Yeah. Okay. So um, I was a chauffeur uh, for. Many, many years. Um, started off with uh, doing some showbiz stuff and then went into diplomatic and military work. And then from that, um, I was a chauffeur for a big insurance company in, in the city of London. And uh, yeah, did that for 30 years. 30 years? Mm. Wow. And, uh, and I think Colin's being modest, you know. So, yeah, so Colin was, he was at the top of his game. When it came to when it came to, when it came to chauffeuring, and you have chauffeured um, some real famous people, Hugh Grant. Yeah, yeah. Hugh um, yeah. Who else? Um, loads of people. Um, probably the the most famous would be uh, Nelson Mandela. Uh, I was uh, one of the team that um, <laughs> one of the team that looked after him when he uh, when he came over. Um, I was normally the backup car, to be honest, but. Uh, Driving, uh, driving his wife, but um, Winnie. No, no, it was uh, Mrs. Michelle. Was the uh, oh, who had a, the yeah. uh, the former wife of the president of Mozambique. Okay, there's a story there. <laughs> so, and um, yeah, people on the channel know that I was uh, a detective inspector uh, within Sussex Police. It was um, joined the police in 1996, 
was a detective basically from 1997 um, and a detective inspector for the from 2009 till I retired in 2023 and so yeah for me so I'm over here completely retired you, you've you've changed the direction obviously you know you've got your own business which is a, a jardinier Piccolo jardinier so it's handyman gardener yeah so how did you go from driving around really really important people um, to driving big massive expensive cars as Jane says you're poncing around in a Mincing around in a flash car, apparently that's what I, that's what I did for a living. <laughs> Mincing around in a flash car and nice suits. And nice suits, yeah. To uh, you're to wearing your your to blue overalls. Captain blue overalls. Captain blue overalls. How, yeah, so, how did you find that transition? Yeah, so it was a, a gradual thing actually because the big insurance brokers that I was working for, they uh, they got bought out by a uh, big American insurance brokers and uh, that sort of changed the dynamic of the work um, and then Covid came along shortly after that and um, obviously it's difficult for a chauffeur to work from home. He was, so, he was getting paid for not driving. So <laughs> obviously there was there was no one travelling, no one was going into the office, there was no uh, clients coming in from from anywhere, so um, I got got paid to stay at home really for about 18 months. <laughs> and during that time, um, I had a little bit of think, a bit of think about it, and I could see the writing on the wall that uh, following COVID, um, various companies were going to have to make cutbacks, and uh, the usual cutbacks in big companies are flowers in reception and chauffeurs. So I always used to make sure when I went into work that there was plenty of flowers in reception. Um, so as I say, I saw the writing on the wall that was coming along. And uh, chauffeurs are in a peculiar situation in the hierarchy of the company. And that uh, they're fairly low down in the hierarchy, but they spend all their time with the most senior people. So that, that meant that I had access to all the most senior people phone calls and so on. And secrets. And secrets, yeah. But, I mean, you know, that's that's part of the yeah. job as being a chauffeur, uh, discretion is number one. So, um, I made the, uh, a few phone calls and uh, said, look, if you, I can see the writing on the wall, as I say, um, if you want me to, um, to slip off, make it worth me while, then um, I'll, I'll do that. And that's, that's what I did, so. Um, I came over to France, having not really worked properly for 18 months. Mm. And you, you already had a holiday home here anyway, didn't you? Yeah, we bought it in 2014 up in Normandy. Uh, so we lived up there for a year. But um, in answer to your question, yeah. what is it like to transition from, from, from one job to another? I don't think... I like to... I'd like to think that your your occupation doesn't define you as a person, although in reality, I guess it kind of does. Mm -hmm. So when I came over here and, and started working, um, you know, doing uh, gardening and stuff, it was lovely. I, you know, out in the fresh air, in the sunshine, doing physical work. That's great. That's great. It's not too long. Exactly. Living the dream. I think, um, you, you, certainly for men anyway. I don't know. I don't know about women, to be honest. Um, in a lot of ways. Who does? Probably <laughs> <laughs> um, about that a long time ago. And I think men can certainly you relate to what I'm about to say in that uh, if you walk into a room, if you walk into a, like a party setting, and you don't know the men around you. The, the conversation will be around what do you do for a living yeah and so people will be interested to know what you do for a living so that they can assess where you are within the hierarchy of that conversation yeah uh, and within that you know they'll be um, gauging how much you earned and uh, and certainly that was part of my life for a long time and uh, and I used to seek comfort in the fact that when I was a police officer 
you know, so you've got to have something about you to, yeah, to become a police officer. And also um, a reasonably high-ranking detective, you know, so it, it didn't matter to me whether you liked the police or not. If I walked into a room and I said I was a detective inspector, then I would take a lot of comfort in that, knowing that um, I knew where I was, I knew where I placed, do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and so and then when I left, so I retired early, obviously, and I, and I obviously retired uh, uh, under ill health, but in reality, I only retired about four months before my natural retirement anyway. It was, you know, so every person's going to go through this in terms of whether they're 67 at normal retirement age or whether you're 51 and retired early. It's like, what do you do? What do you do next? And who are you? Who, who are you? Who, yeah. who's, who's Colin and who's Rob? And, it, and it's finding that new identity. And for me, um, I have. I had no transferable skills coming over to France, and obviously I'm on a working visa. I'm on a non-working visa as well, and so it's not as if I could start up my own um, consultancy company, and uh, and I wouldn't have done that anyway because the whole idea for us was to come over here and have a and have a different pace of life. But uh, I think for me, what what's given me purpose is is this channel, because I didn't realise. I was in any way creative, you know, having gone from the army where everything was black and white, you, you did as you told, and pretty much the same in the police. You know, you're taught how to investigate a crime, and you go on courses and stuff, and you investigate the crime as per your teachings, you know. So, with this channel and the YouTube, and especially the editing, I can play around with my, with my creative style, and, and I think I just wanted to be good at something again, because I, I, could, I consider myself a fairly decent detective, and... Uh, and I just wanted to be good at something again, so which is why I put a lot of effort uh, into the channel, and which is why Lisa allows me to put an extraordinary amount of effort into the channel. But because we know somebody uh, of sorts um, that has sold a company and has come into a lot of money, um, and is in effect you're going to retire, so he'll obviously not have any money problems. But it's like for him being a high-powered exec going mm. into nothing it's like how do you adjust to that I've seen, yeah I've seen it I've seen it quite a few times um, you know particularly in the past where they uh, they go from 100 miles an hour and they come screeching to a stop yeah and they're kind of flapping around yeah for a while until they find a new direction yeah and there's been a few yeah, chief constables um, within the recent past that have um, committed suicide within two weeks of leaving because they've not found, you know, yeah, that's all, policing was everything to them, and then being forced to retire because they've done their 30 years or whatever, and then, uh, yeah, they've hit, hit some yeah, yeah, serious yeah, mental health problems. So, yeah, if anyone's got any views... Do, well, well, do you think that those those individuals had the mental health problems anyway, that, that they were just being held in check by their work? And so as soon as... The work was taken away. Those mental health problems uh, were exacerbated by that inactivity. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, yeah, certainly within policing, um, one in five police officers have post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, so that's um, and, and and I think that's a conservative es estimate. And uh, that was uh, found out as a result of Police K UK uh, completing a uh, trauma within policing study back in 2018. Um, and it was completed by Cambridge University, and uh, you know they sampled about fourteen thousand officers, which is which is actually quite a lot. Yes, yeah, just over ten percent. And uh, providing that those officers were truthful in the questionnaire and the interviews, uh, which I suspect some would probably play down, almost twenty percent of police officers have got PTSD. Now, certainly from my experience, when I was diagnosed and uh, and I was off sick, I didn't have the I didn't have the distractions of work anymore. Mm. And so everything just came crashing in in terms of the remun remu remunerate remuneration is the word. That's the one we're looking for. Yeah, just, yeah, just thinking about lots of things all the time and yeah. the flashbacks and stuff. So yeah, I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right in terms of um, mental health and probably trauma catching up on them. Yeah. But um, yeah, so yes, yeah, so let us know in the comments uh, about, about your experiences. Um, with, yeah, with mental health, with retiring, finding. A new identity, right? Whether you think that your occupation does define you, de define you as a person. Um, yes, let us know. I think my um, my brother was a perfect example of of how to do it. So he was uh, 
He was in the Royal Navy for nine years yeah. and, and went into the London Fire Brigade for, for 30 years. And um, when he retired, um, he retired before the days of counselling, before the days yeah, of yeah. PTSD, before any of that. And so there was no aftercare? Th there was no aftercare whatsoever. And he was just the most resilient person that I'd ever met in my life. Um, he was just, you could put him anywhere mm. and he would not only survive, but he'd thrive. Mm. And he would make something out of nothing. So, uh, if I could follow that example, I'd probably helps I'm basically lazy as well. <laughs> and he lived the dream in Cape Verde. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, for uh, 10 years. Decent. Yes. On the beach drinking beer. Where did it all go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> It's a vocation, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Let's let us know in the comments. That, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, this has been a long one, but I think well worth yeah, the discussion. Right, so whatever next is, let's do that. Right, so I'm back home. Um, yeah, I've got someone to show you. Her name's Belle. It's for beautiful. We were going to say call her Bo, but that's for a boy. But, uh, She's a bit dirty. Yes, yeah, she's a rescue Falabella. Falabella? Or cross Falabella? Huh? Possibly. Possibly. Anyway. She's got a chip for the inside I'll show you. Meet Belle, everybody. It's the first time I've met her, so you're meeting her at the same time as me. I don't know how she's going to... Okay. There you go. It's okay. Yeah. There you go. But she needs a... Uh, it's a brush, she's got very long hair. <laughs> so, I don't know about quarantine periods. Um, she's in the holding cell at the moment. She's going down there to Wally tonight. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so you're learning this at the same time as me. She's going down to meet Wally tonight. Because uh, they'll be separated. We're putting the temperatures fencing in. Okay, good. Right. I'll see you tomorrow. November, All Saints Day, here in France. We're wearing shorts. It's going to go up to like 21, 22 degrees today. <laughs> it's a little funny. Um, I always take the Mickey out of uh, out of the limousine because of the uh, because of the poor weather there. And uh, although I've never been to experience it, it's just rumour. The cat's going to jump on my shoulder again. Uh, but Lisa went there. She's been there twice now. Uh, the first time to go and have a look at uh, Belle the horse and then the second time to go and collect Belle and both times she had to put a big coat on she said she could just tell the difference in weather anyway a uh, massive shout out to uh, to Katie and Chris who uh, who we interviewed on a video got that video did quite well uh, yeah they're moving over in April they're from America and uh, I told them that I'd run out of the mayonnaise uh, yeah that they brought us over and um, they've sent us over three massive jars of mayonnaise um it took ages to get it um, but it's well worth it because the mayonnaise is absolutely stunning so thank you kate and chris now i al already know that this video is long only because the the part with me and colin talking that's about 30 minutes long so that's a video within itself then i started to become paranoid saying oh today i'm younger i have to keep it short and i thought no i'm not i'm not gonna and i'm also thinking of um Instead of the Monday's video going out on Monday, putting out on put, put the Monday's video out on Sunday. And that was after talking to Colin. French coach had life. Look at the description. He puts his videos out on Sunday. And uh, and he said, it's not by accident. Because that's that seems to be the day of the week that people watch YouTube is a Sunday. You know, so if um, I'm gonna give that a go. Anyway, so what I didn't film yesterday was Lisa and I, when I got back from uh, from helping Colin out. We needed to separate the bottom field. I didn't film it <clears throat> to keep Belle and Wally separate for a bit. And then uh, Lisa 
went down with their camera and saw this. Yeah, so it's been taken down now. And I'll show you, I'll show you a little bit later uh, because I've got to pop to the car for uh, to go and get some potatoes because I'm doing a curry today. I'm not filming it. Um, but it just gives me the opportunity to do the sunglasses thing. The amount of comments I'm getting from people saying that they love it. I just thought it was a bit of self-indulgence self for, yeah, for what I enjoy. But uh, it seems that other people do as well. Anyway, yeah, send me yours. Right, so let me... Let's just get the sunglasses thing out of the way. Come on, let's do that. Right. These ones? Thanks, guys. <laughs> Cue slow-mo. Did you know that a perfect slow-mo takes between 2.8 and 3.2 and 3.2 seconds and then slow it down to 25%? So let's go from here to here. Right. I've um <laughs> I've I've come the long way in just so I can see the horses. And uh see if we can use the Ken Burns effect now to zoom in. <laughs> Belisa's down there with uh Bell, who's hiding somewhere. I can be on Wally. Are they uh Are they okay? Yeah, they're very <laughs> Right. Let's get home. Right, so let's walk down. I'll have a little chat. <laughs> Literally as I was uh, as I was driving down, I was blurting out a uh, killer whisper in the car. Sing along to it. It's definitely not within my vocal range, <laughs> but it didn't stop me. Anyway, so I mentioned about uh, about zooming in using the Ken Burns effect. I'm learning all the time now about this editing lark. Didn't even realise about the Ken Burns effect. I thought you could just use it on photos. But I've been practising with it, with the interview that I did with Colin about retirement. So you, you may not even notice it because it, it is quite subtle. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> Where if Colin's talking or if I'm talking, I'll, in the edit, zoom in on the face it's really clever i think it makes it a lot more look a bit more professional but uh the uh i'm probably using it in all in all the wrong places anyway who i get my editing tip from is richard hall from a new life in france this is their channel hello from the southwest of france and the river lot we're back again and boy are we pleased to see you and we're so pleased to see so many new subscribers and viewers it's it's honestly it's heartwarming and by way of a tribute all i can say is cue the slow mo <laughs> i'm really sorry rob has got that to a fine tea with his slow mo sequences. I think we need a bit more practice, don't we? Yeah, I think we need more practice. And uh, the reason why I mentioned earlier about about not caring about this video is when you really get into a channel, if you're really like me, if you sit down and think and see it's only eight minutes long, you're thinking it's hardly worth making a cup of tea for that. But if you see that it's a longer one, no, I'm going to make a morning of it. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> and if you if you feel like that about this channel, um, then you're welcome. If not, you're probably bored already. Anyway, here's the horses. Right, so I'm learning stuff about Belle all the time. So Belle is chipped, and she's from Holland, and she's very very dirty. She's like a rescue. Yeah, bless her. So, yeah. For those of you that have not seen my wife in a while, this is my beautiful wife, Lisa, <laughs> Lisa Jane. So Belle is, um, so Belle's just been in a field for six years. She's 20 years old. Um, she's not had much human contact, you know, so we're really pleased that she's allowing Lisa to, uh, to stroke her. But so we've got no vaccination records. We don't know whether she's been wormed. So we're going to get, we're going to get a vet in 
yeah, just to give her the once over. And uh, once we start getting, once she starts getting used to us, yeah, you know, she can she can have a proper clean and stuff like that. But she's she's gonna get a brush today. She's gonna get a brush today. But she's a yeah. Uh, yeah, she's really chilled. Hello, Wally. I'll say good morning to you. Yet. <laughs> but yeah. You see his eyes. <laughs> what are you doing? Giving it a clean. So obviously I cleaned it yesterday, not yeah. with any. Um, you superstar. Only with water. <laughs> but he's licking the top of the bar. Yeah. I asked a question the other day. Why? Uh, about who's the most famous person that you've met? And then Colin drops in, and Nelson Mandela. <laughs> he's met him three times, I think. He's had a chat with him. He said he's a lovely fella. Um, it's probably better than God then, isn't it? Although, Morgan Freeman, Richard Hull, he plays God, doesn't he? In a lot of movies. Anyway, just, just waffling on now. <laughs> Whatever next is, probably not a lot. Let's do that. Right, so it's lunchtime here, the Morland household. And uh, I'm, having, uh, I'm having chips and gravy with the mayonnaise. Sorry, Katie, I know you wanted me to... Uh, Make a sandwich with it, but uh, it just goes perfectly with the uh, chips and gravy. Yeah. Sun's out, guns out. On the first of November. There you go. Look at them. <laughs> right. right. Do you want to know something mental? <laughs> it's been speaking to a lovely chat called Peter Bartholomew um, from the Derbyshire Dales. Him and his uh, Mrs. Gemma. They're moving over to uh, to France between now and September. And uh, they were told about our channel through his mum, Steph Towers. Who I said to, uh, to Peter that I'd give a shout out to. So, hi Steph. And thanks for the recommendation. But uh, Peter and Gemma have been playing catch up on the videos. And he was saying that he was in the pub the other night. Watching the video on the phone. And some bloke came up to him. He's also ex-army. Uh, signaller. And uh, he's... And he said that he watched the videos too. So they both sat there watching the videos on their phones in the pub in Derbyshire, I think it was. Anyway, just crazy, isn't it? YouTube's crazy. Right. Let's go and have a look at the horses. Now, right, Angel, you've been brushing the horse? Yeah? Have you? You're going to say anything to the camera? Say bonjour. Say bonjour. Mm, you're too shy. Oh wow. So is it the, is it the first time you got a excellent hello? <laughs> and Wally as well. You good boy. <laughs> Excuse the panting. <laughs> the hill's massive. There you go. All right, there they are. He's happy. <laughs> anyway. Oh, right. Currently, about well, quarter three in the afternoon, um, the curry, uh, the meat's currently marinating. I'm not doing a Kenneth Williams for that. Yeah, I am. <laughs> um, I'm going to cook that off and uh, start editing this. So, laters. <laughs> 